Looks like I'm recording. I don't know if this is going to my channel or what. I'm going to see. I am on YouTube, on Misdiagnosed, and I thought I was just going to do a quick live this morning. Um, let me go to YouTube and check this out. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on with this. It said that um, my channel wasn't big enough. Uh, yeah. So. Uploads. I don't want to see uploads. I want to see live. Okay. Can't do this from my phone. I'll check this out later. If it records, it records. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm on my iPad because I'm testing out different equipment today. Um, I have my computer, I have a new microphone, um, so I'm, I'm gonna try different things and see what works best for the live. Um, I haven't been really satisfied with the sound, so I'm trying different things. Um, so, <laughs> good morning. I thought I'd come and have coffee with you guys. Uh, it is, what time is it? 2.48 a.m. Yeah, I've been up for about an hour and a half now. Um, insomnia is my friend. I am just... I think it's it's the stress of everything here. I have too much going on. Um, yesterday, I got a shipment in. I'm getting new hardwood floor upstairs in the living area because... Uh, my husband is getting older and he's having more tripping problems and I thought, you know, we need a nice smooth floor where he can roll his walker right across the floor, right? So, um, the guys came to deliver. Now, I don't know about you, but you really have to talk to these guys. They had a pallet of stuff that they wanted to drop in my driveway. I said, oh no, I paid for delivery. You're going to bring it in the house. Same thing happened. I had ordered a whole flat of like 30 arborvitae trees that were four foot tall to go across the back of my property after the storms um, had ruined my hedgerow. And I had to go out there with the, my kids and friends came to help me dig out the root balls and everything. And we had to plant all of those trees. Well, um, yeah, I've got all these trees being delivered and the guys just wanted to drop this stuff in my driveway and I said no I paid for delivery I want them off of the pallet I don't want your pallet you take the pallet back with you and you will bring that to my back patio because I still have to plant it all and I'm an old woman and I am not lifting all this stuff by myself so begrudgingly they moved all that stuff to my back patio um, I watered it for the next two weeks until I could get it all in, but uh, that was a big chore. And same thing with this. The flooring, when it comes in, it needs to sit for something like three days to acclimate so that it's ready to put down on your floor. They wanted to drop it in my driveway or in my garage, and I said, no, it needs to come in the house where it's going to live and be in the space. So... Um, they were not happy with that, but they got it off the truck. Then they decided they were going to wheel this heavy load on a pallet across my grass. Guess what didn't make it across the grass? As I saw them heading towards the lawn, I said, I don't think that's going to work. You've got hundreds of pounds on this thing. The, the, they don't even have wheels. They have these metal round things that look like wheels. There are two of them in the front. They, they look like cylinders, metal cylinders, and they're trying to roll this across the lawn. Sunk right in. So then they had to rip the plastic wrap off of it and, you know, get it one by one in pieces and bring it in. Well, I'm holding the door. I'm opening and closing the door to keep the bugs out so that they can carry the stuff in, and I showed them where I wanted it. Well... They didn't stack it up where I wanted it because I have to move 
all of the furniture out of those rooms because the guys that come to install the flooring, see this is, this is where customer service has really fallen down on the job. The guys that come to install it tell me they can only move five pieces of furniture. Now I have a room that's about 22 foot long by 15, plus a hallway that they're putting this in. They're not gonna move the furniture unless I pay them $100 per piece to move it, to move it like 15 feet into the kitchen area. So I said, no, I'm not paying that. So gradually I have to move the furniture out and I've been doing that this week little by little because my back will only take so much. So um, I am moving, I'm moving things as I can. And as I do that, I'm going through drawers. Like I have a big two drawer lateral file cabinet upstairs that's full of papers. And so I'm going through and I'm shredding things and getting rid of stuff. So it's a good process to go through. It's, it's like cleaning house. Um, but the mind just gets going and you forget, you forget what you're doing and what you're supposed to be doing. Um, it's been a busy week and I'm not making apologies for myself, but that's why I'm up at this time of day because I start thinking about things in the middle of the night. Now, the other thing that's going on, you know, I told you guys I got in this book. This is an excellent book. It's talking about lipedema and then nutrition. And so one of the things that I do is I reuse a lot of things in my household. Um, I have my Sunday AM pillbox. You may recognize these. These are craft made boxes. But trust me, they work just fine when you're doling out your medication for the week. And I need to start taking my medication for today because this stuff is what keeps me going. Now I have changed over pretty much to a high protein, low carb diet because I find that with the Crohn's, with the lipedema, uh, with other issues at gastric uh, reflux, other issues that I have, I do better on protein. I cut way back on fruits even. I, I just eat a few berries because um, the sugars and things in, I, I'm, I'm not eating sugar, the sugars and things that are even normal fructose in fruit seems to bother me. So I, I try to stay away from all kinds of sugar. Um, so yeah, let me get started on this. So um, I've got my pill box with all my stuff and this has become a daily regimen. I've been trying to go to the gym more often. Um, one of the reasons is because with the osteoporosis, I have, well, osteopenia is what they call it for me. I don't have osteoporosis because I haven't broken anything. I'm pre-osteo um, and I don't want to break anything. So I am doing my level best to get plenty of calcium and the right things in my diet. So, you know, thus I take pills. years, guy. guys. I haven't given up my coffee. And I try to keep track. I have a, I have a tracker. This is my tracker. And I try to keep track of what I'm doing um, and write things down. Now, one of the things I try to keep track of are all of these supplemental things that I'm doing. And I can, you know, I list them here so that I can put them in my container and take them each week uh, because I cannot possibly remember what all of this stuff is doing for me because not only do I have this pill box for me, I have a pill box for my husband. Yeah. 
because mm. um, he has his own pile that he's taking every morning. But this book is really good. Um, it's talking about your gut and food choices and all that kind of thing. I was trying to see if there was a section here. You have meal plans, eating patterns. Uh, vitamins and minerals, yes. There's a whole section here on vitamins and minerals. So what they recommend is multivitamin, vitamin B12. I get vitamin B12 in the sublingual because after having abdominal surgeries, they remove part of the gut. And if they do that, the part of your body that absorbs that nutrition is no longer there. So you need to have another vehicle to deliver that to your body. So I take a sublingual, which is a liquid, and I take my D and my B in a sublingual form and I put it under my tongue and let it sit there and it soaks in. I've already done it this morning. It sits there and it soaks in through the skin. So B12, D, and calcium. Of course, you know I'm taking those. Magnesium. Magnesium is very important. Um, I take magnesium and potassium. And the reason I do that is for my skin and my legs. Um, I was getting really bad leg cramps. And I thought, well, what can I do to alleviate this? Well, uh, that I think has helped. Um, but they also talk about advanced age. Hello, advanced age, that's me, that's me. Um, and how your magnesium absorption decreases. So yeah, I need to, need to up that. And another way that you can get magnesium is with an Epsom salt soak. So, like, when my husband, I, I put him on a bench in the bathtub, but then I run the water, and I put Epsom salt in an oatmeal bath in there. The oatmeal is for his skin <laughs> to, to alleviate dry skin in older people, because older people get dry skin. And um, the Epsom salt is magnesium, and you can absorb that through your skin. So the Epsom salt bath is important. Um, Let's see, selenium, selenium. Why am I taking selenium? Ah, it's for uh, cell damage, it's for immune support. And because I have autoimmune diseases, which is the Crohn's, which is the lipedema, um, you know, I've had a hysterectomy and they've removed parts of my body that, um, function in a normal female that I don't have anymore and so a lot of those fluids and things that are being retained in my legs or in my fat tissue um, is because my body doesn't pump that out anymore so yeah selenium omega-3 fats yes um, I don't have any uh, I've never had high cholesterol or anything like that, but I do eat fatty fish, and I do get omega-3 through through that consumption. Um, butcher's broom. It's a powdered extract. It increases fluid movement within the lymph vessels. Butcher's broom. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying to get enough liquids in and flush out the stuff that is toxic in my system. Um, I have more trouble getting those things that are toxic out. So butcher's broom is good for that. L-arginine. Um, it says that it helps with the lymphedema and lipedema uh, to increase nitric oxide availability and improve lymphatic vascular integrity. Well, as we age, we all know that our vessels are not as good as they used to be, right? So it, to increase vascular integrity, yeah, okay. Good one to take, right? 
Um, it, it's also something um, they tell you to be careful with if you have congestive heart failure, that you need to divide it up. So just a warning there. Uh, and talk to your doctor. I'm not a doctor. Talk to your doctor about these things if you're considering starting it because, um, you know, and my doctor knows nothing about nutrition, let me tell you that. Um, I give them the list and they look at it and they'll say, well, why are you taking that? And then I have to stop and think. Yeah, I take potassium because I get leg cramps. That's why. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then they have a whole list of supplements as needed. Well, um, I'm not... I'm not taking a lot of those because it includes pineapple and flavonoids and all that sort of thing. But, you know, I've got my whole list of things that I do take. Um, I don't have a gallbladder anymore. So, you know, those things have all changed. So, milk thistle, butcher's bloom, black cohosh, ginseng, natto canise. Natto canise is a fermented product. It's from soy. Now, a lot of people say they have a problem with soy, but um, natto canise, I'm trying because I'm trying to change my gut bacteria mix. And a lot of the bacteria problems or a lot of the acid reflux problems I have is because I have the wrong mix in my gut. Let me take another pill. Cheers. Thanks for bearing with me. So we talked about L-Arginine. I do take apple cider vinegar. That also is to change the pH and um, the mixture in my gut. Potassium citrate is for my legs. Turmeric. Turmeric is very good for that vascular stuff too. Uh, chelated magnesium. I don't just take magnesium through the baths, but chelated magnesium is something that is more readily available to your body. If you if you look at chelated vitamins, um, they're usually a little bit more expensive, but they make these things more accessible for your body. Q10, coenzyme, uh, D3, a probiotic, iron, yes, I do need iron because I tend to be a little bit anemic, even though I eat a lot of meat now. I never ate meat before like this. This is crazy. Um, I was more of a vegetarian. You know, we grow all of our own stuff in the garden and that kind of thing. Um, and I, I used to make bread like crazy. I don't eat bread anymore. Uh, the only bread I eat are chaffles that are made with cheese or like the... Um, where is it from? It's a South American country that makes... Brazilian uh, cheese bread. They make a cheese bread and I make it with like almond flour so that it's nuts and cheese and um, no wheat, no wheat. That stuff, it's a killer. You know, the, the GMO, what they've done with our products. <clears throat> There's so many people now, you never heard about celiac disease, you never heard about um, all of these gastric problems. Now everybody seems to be having them. I talked to a young girl, 25 years old, that did my hair. She's been in the hospital having surgery on her gut. Um, they're talking about all of these things that are going on with her. She said that there's no one in her family who is not taking omeprazole, which is an antacid, a, a prescription antacid, and I said, you need to make a change in your diet, dear. Um, they had me on two different antacids. Omeprazole was one. I had another one. It didn't do anything for me. I still had acid reflux. I was still popping pills on top of that, and you know, it might alleviate it for 15 minutes and then it was right back. So I had to do something or I wouldn't have an esophagus left because all that acid would have just eroded everything. Okay, get off my soapbox. B and B12, I, like I said, I take that as a sublingual. Uh, berberine, K2, 
can't tell you exactly why I'm taking the berberine right now. Look it up. I'm sure it has beneficial. Um, I take Garcinia Cambogia Calcium K2. That's one of the things that my body doesn't absorb well um, because of the portion of my gut that's missing. K2, vitamin A, vitamin E. I am deficient in both of those. I had blood work done just recently. A, E, and D I am deficient in, so I know I have to take those. Get your blood work done. See what you're deficient in. And honestly, uh, part of what they were part of what they were testing for, um, I had to go to an endocrinologist for because my my normal blood work with my general practitioner did not disclose this stuff. I had to ask for another blood panel to show me those deficiencies. And so they did a bone scan, they did more blood work, and that's how I discovered this stuff. So don't just assume that your general practitioner is testing for all of these things. They don't. Okay, multivitamin, uh, at least 4,000 of the D2, and then lipoic acid. So that's, that's my list of what I'm taking because trying to get better, trying to get healthier, trying to stay healthier. Now, go and check, go and check my other channel because um, I'm going to have Sunday snippets here in just a little bit. And um, I'll show you some of the artsy things that I've been doing because I've also been doing that in addition to gardening, the home stuff, the remodeling. Oh yeah, I'm remodeling in the kitchen too. I'm painting. I don't know if I can show you guys. I'm painting the cupboards. I had issues with the hardware this week. Um, they did not send me what I thought was going to work. Or they did send me. I've had three shipments already, none of which are the right hardware. So I'm dealing with shipping things back and getting hardware um, because the old stuff The old stuff looked like this, and it's ugly, and I'm painting all of this out, right? Okay, the new stuff, I'm painting out to this nice soft gray, and I'm getting that brushed nickel look hardware, but this is the wrong fit. Can you see the crack in here? So I've got to order some other stuff, and it's on order. It's going to take two weeks to get here. So I've kind of stopped that project because I may have to drill new holes and I don't want to have to sand all that down and repaint it and another job if it's not well done, but I'm working on it. So um, that's the update. <laughs> that's the health update from the Robinson household. Um, Ron's supposed to be going in for an echo here this month. Uh, we've got family birthdays and stuff going on. What else is going on? I don't know. What's going on in your life? Leave me a message. I like to hear from you guys. I like to know what's happening. Um, if you have some suggestions for me about what you think might be beneficial, drop me a note. Um, I'm always willing to hear. Um, one of the things that I found beneficial this week is I was at the gym and the uh, swimming pool, the sauna, and the whirlpool. Um, the Whirlpool was, was really good for my back. I was having, after all the lifting and toting and stuff I've been doing, you know, the part of the problem with the osteo stuff is I have shrunk four inches. And so my spine is compressing. And so I have more pain just because those discs are compressing. So I get in there and that water pummeling the back helps with that. I've also... You know, with fibromyalgia, it's difficult for me to go and get a massage because I have a lot of areas that are very painful and I have to tell them to stop. <laughs> but I've started a regimen of massage, too, because what they recommend with uh, lipedema is that there's a specific type of massage that you can do to move 
the fluid up and out of your arms and legs. And they tell you to do dry brushing, you know, to you take a, a soft brush and you dry brush your skin to loosen that up and you massage. And then I also bought new compression wear, which also helps, you know, that motion and that getting that fluid out because, you know, one of, one of my problems is all these toxins are residing in that sick fat tissue in my thighs and then in my butterfly wings <laughs> here on my arms I've got these lumps I've got these lumps I mean this is all this is all like this I've got these lumps in here that are painful that are just full of I don't know what that my body doesn't seem to be able to eliminate so that's what lymphedema is all about and that's what I'm dealing with and why I'm sharing this with you, because um, doctors really don't know much about it. Um, the most I heard about it was on YouTube and through this book. Um, this gal, Karen Wees Herbst, is the resident expert on lipedema and lymphedema. And I did, I'm going to, the plastic surgeon this month, um, he is going to remove some of the more painful lumps from my legs. Um, I've had this done about 10 times throughout my lifetime where they go in and take the painful lumps. I had one I was sitting on. It felt like I was sitting on a rock. Um, and I talked to him about, because somebody had mentioned liposuction, and I talked to him about that, and he said, oh, no, that um, trying to suction all that fat out can just move some of that tissue around and maybe introduce more infection, and that that was not the way to go with lipedema. So if you're seeing people talking, it might work with lymphedema, talk to your doctors. I don't know. All I know is what I've been told and what I'm trying to figure out for myself, but um, you do you, I'll do me, and let me know what your thoughts are because even at this age, I haven't figured it all out yet, and I'm still working on it. You know, I thought when we were holistic and growing our own food and raising our own chickens for our eggs and baking our own bread and making our own yogurt and all that stuff I did when my kids were young and we were they were growing up and I was trying to have a healthy family and a good life, and I thought all that stuff was protecting me and um, it may have kept me alive to this point however I still have just as many issues as I ever did and I have to be very cautious and um, I know many of you are suffering with similar things so you know be aware of your body go get checked by your doctors and see what's going on with you um, check your supplements Check and see what you're deficient in and do what you can to help your own body. You know, um, the Lord is with us, but we do need to be taking care of the vessel that he's given us to live in. So my love to you. Happy Sunday, people, and God bless. Love you all.